mention the overseas pros that would come and stay with your family and also your older brothers and one of them, Stuart, also represented Scotland briefly. What was it like yeah. growing up in a household where it wasn't just your dad who was pushing the cricket, but you had uh, siblings who encouraged that love of the game as well? Yeah, it was great having having two older brothers who played you know, that I sort of followed them around really. Um, when they were playing, when I was too young, I guess, I'd follow them around and watch them play. I'd follow my dad around and watch him play. But I would always be playing on the side of the field somewhere. Uh, and I think my first ever sort of game was because someone dropped out. So they were like, right, Kyle, are you okay to play? I can't even remember how old I was. I was probably like nine or eight or something like that, playing for an under-13 game. And I just had a sawn off short handled bat so it's a full size bat and my dad was like right just cut the end off and I used that and I batted probably top scored in the game actually I seem to remember doing okay or get, getting knocked out or or something like that but yeah that was that was my sort of first experience of playing and playing with them and um, we were actually really lucky at our family my my mum's brother so my uncle Grant Dugmore was a, a very good cricketer so he came over and was the pro at the club for a few years and he played various SA country districts in South Africa. So you're he, dro he you're a dropping a, a, a bomb into the chat here, Kyle. Not just the South Africa domestic cricket. Grant Dugmore, associate cricket legend, yeah. Argentina. Yes, yeah. So he played cricket for Argentina. Uh, yeah, he, he represented uh, the Americas, I think, uh, at, at board level or uh, possibly um, he was not yeah he was not not only the argentina captain the long time argentina player he was the argentina cricket board ceo for quite a number of years too yeah yeah so that's my mom's brother so um we we once played a seven aside competition in aberdeen at a place called gordonians and the team consisted of myself my two brothers sean and stuart my dad peter my uncle grant so that's five and my my uh, my dad's brother Chris. So that's six of us. And then there was one lone soldier. I can't remember who the other person was. He wasn't a a family member. So there was there was six out of the seven players playing in that competition that were from the same family. So that's that's sort of how how things worked around our club. And yeah, Grant Grant was an excellent coach. Grant, my dad being my being my dad, I guess as kids do, you don't tend to listen to your parents as much. But so I think my dad sort of always set set Grant on us to take us for um, cricket sessions and private work and stuff like that. So Grant taught us a, a lot, taught us a, a, you know, he really did. He was a superb coach and I'm sure he still is when he, when he has time to do it. So yeah, we were very lucky to have that. And Grant was an amazing player. So um, he led the way in many ways. In terms of the pedigree in your family, when you've got uh, an uncle like that and you talk about your dad and, I mentioned before your older brother made it to Scotland as well. Did you ever feel any pressure to live up to certain expectations or to, to play to a certain level because you had all these people in your family who had risen to a certain stature, whether it was within South Africa cricket, the domestic scene there, or within the Scotland setup? No, not really, to be honest. I guess the pressure started much later than that. In terms of playing cricket, it was it was just fun and I enjoyed it. There was no there was no pressure to ever perform. You know, you, you learned along the way and people people taught you lessons. It was great. You know, when Scottish cricket started having junior levels, I think we started with three games a year. So it was like three under 13 games a year. And that was it. And then following that, it, it had a festival plus a couple of games. And then it just grew from, from there. I, I always remember winning Scotland's first ever under 13s game I think it was or maybe it's 15s I'm not sure against Durham and we we're playing at Fetters College in in Edinburgh and that was a pretty monumentous day for us we knew that was the first county we'd ever beaten uh, you know you spoke about my brothers my, my eldest brother captain Scotland under 19s he played for Scotland A he was a he was a good cricketer he was probably the most gutsy cricketer out of the three of us to be honest but he probably missed the boat a little bit because of of his age really and what opportunities were around at the time. Stuart potentially was probably the best player out of the three of us, but he was also the cleverest. So he realized that he's not going to probably make any money out of playing cricket in Scotland. So, so he went and got himself a real job. And then I think the timing, the sort of stars aligned a little bit for me 
in the timing of when opportunities sort of opened up and where there was more cricket to play, I guess it became slightly more professional. Uh, Scotland got in the YB40s. I luckily got into Durham Academy and went down that route. So I guess the stars probably aligned a little bit more for me. Stuart also played for Scotland in the 19s. He did play a couple of internationals. He played in the game that Scotland first beat Bangladesh, but that was before they were a test nation, I think. I could be wrong. At the Grange, and then Stuart also played a few YB40 games. He's, Stuart's well known for, after the game, they would put a drinks order around and people say, like, what do you want? And people would say, like, orange and pint of orange and lemonade and someone might have a pint of beer or something after the game or something. Stuart was always well known for asking for a double Jack and Coke to f- <laughs> following his first YB40 game. But that was his his character and the way he liked to enjoy himself as he as he played, I guess. So that was after the game, obviously, not during the game or not before it. Not like people used to do at lunch and maybe have a glass of wine or something. I was going to say certain certain levels of cricket, yeah, that, that would be uh, what you'd have at fine leg while the bowler's running in. Yeah, yeah. And I'm sure if, if it was a few years before that, I'm sure Stuart would have certainly attempted that down at fine leg. So, yeah, look, I was very lucky with my, my upbringing. I had... My dad used to show us up all the time. He would uh, he would get off the flight. Being at Stonywood Dice, our cricket ground is actually inside the airport grounds. So you look over the fence and the runway's there. You can actually see people's faces through the windows of the planes. You know, not very clearly, but the, the planes are coming over the corner of the ground that low that you can actually see, see some silhouettes in the windows. So I've got away with the odd nick through to the keeper now and then um, back in the day. You couldn't hear because of the jet engines. But yeah, we used to pick pick my old man up from the airport. He would drive round, get, get driven round, and he'd turn up and, and play on a Saturday for us and regularly score more runs than the three of us. I always remember the day he came back and yes, Arafat was playing for Clydesdale and he walked out, didn't bat with a helmet like he usually, well, like he usually didn't. Maybe he got convinced to put one on that day, but I always remember not batting with one. So I'll continue with that part of the stories of not using one against Yasser. Probably on single figures, he, he tore his Achilles or his calf and he couldn't run. So he just, he wasn't the most pleasant batter to watch, if I'm being honest. He was leaning his bat over the top, but he was effective, you know. But he proceeded to get 70 odd with Yasser leading the attack for Clydesdale. And I'm pretty sure I helped Stoney would win the, win the game that day. And he was on crutches for probably another two months after that. So it just sort of showed his character, you know. He was a pretty fine cricketer, really. He certainly showed us all how to play the game in a tough, tough manner. And then we had Grant, my mum's brother, who was a fine cricketer, and, and my mum's dad, who played um, representative cricket. Uh, if I'm not, if I'm sure she'll correct me, but I'm pretty sure he played for Eastern Province to some extent and scored scored a few hundreds. And his name was Sid Sid Dugmore, so he was he was also a fine cricketer. So he always said that I needed to just catch up with the amount of hundreds he scored. So um, I'll have to follow that up. You know, whenever we were over there, we'd have a have a good chat, and he would play around with us. You know, but yeah. So there's a there's a I guess there's a rich cricketing background within our our family. I guess just sporting really. So I was I was pretty lucky to have have that around every corner, wherever it was. It was rugby, it was football, it was hockey, anything really. A golf is not one that any of our family are any good actually. So I can't claim claim that. So 